everyone. My name is Andita, and I'm an organizer with the PSO. I am a parent. I have a 10-year-old son. Like many parents, had to make a difficult decision between sending my son to school or trying to juggle a full-time job and participate in his homeschooling full-time as well. My son has an IEP, an individualized education program, because he learns differently. He needs extra support to help him meet his goals in writing and comprehension. So I asked, how will he receive his services? I was told we can't deny his services, but it would be best for him to attend in-person schools. So it's parents' choice unless your child needs services. This is why it was so difficult for me. As a socialist, I know this capitalist system based on profit is a bunch of BS. And while we are here building revolution in his lifetime, I need him to have the tools to survive this capitalist system. I decided to opt out because virtual return is the only safe return we have right now for the students, teachers, and staff. You know how I know I made the right choice? Schools reopened this past Monday, and by Tuesday night, Attleboro Public Schools, right? Attleboro is just 15 minutes from the state of Rhode Island, not even 48 hours from school reopenings, I got an email alerting parents that a student had tested positive for COVID-19 and spent the entire day in classes. Now, those who have been in contact with that student have been sent home for the next 14 days to quarantine. And the way that it has been framed is that the parents want our children to go back to school in the middle of a pandemic because we want to go back to our workplaces without any relief. It's parents versus the teachers. At least that's what they want us to believe. But let's not get it twisted. Parents and teachers are on the same side. I support our teachers that are forced to return to unsafe buildings. And it's not the teachers who are responsible for the disarray of the educational system or the government's horrific response to the COVID pandemic. You know who is? It's the politicians at the local and federal levels that have not provided anything to us, especially our children to thrive during this pandemic, but a $1,200 check. So why are parents, families, and workers across the country being forced to choose between their own health and having a job? In the richest country on the planet, a single check is not enough to cover my rent or mortgage. It's not en enough to ensure our kids even have roofs over their heads. The government hasn't provided free and reliable Wi-Fi service, hasn't provided laptops to every single student, hasn't been able to provide essential workers with personal protective equipment in the middle of a global pandemic. Baker and Raimundo are the same. Raimundo says she worries the most about our children who live in poverty. Please, we know she doesn't care about our children, especially not working class children, black and brown children. How do we know that? For one, telling us to go back to school in person, but they aren't doing anything to make school buildings. We are going back to safe or even inhabitable. The U.S. Government Accountability Office released a report last month saying that more than half of all U.S. public schools need major repairs. 36,000 buildings needing repairs to their ventilation systems. Why are more than half of U.S. public schools in a state of disrepair? And if we look more closely in our segregated school system, it's the schools that set up working class students. They're in the worst shape. They say they don't have money to fix school buildings, but they have money to build out corporations. How can Armando say she cares about the well-being of our children? but she does not give us access to free health care. And it's more apparent in home of the free, land of the brave, right? They don't care about us compared to other countries, and I'm talking socialist countries, that are leading and fighting the virus. In Cuba, in their population of 11.2 million people, there have been under 100 people who have died from COVID. Their health care system didn't collapse. In fact, they sent their doctors, right, their health care workers, to Italy, Guinea Bissau, Cabo Verde, Pakistan, and more. It's their socialist government that guarantees people a home and free universal health care. It should be the example we're looking at.
Just last month, right, in August, 25 million people filed for unemployment. While during this pandemic, the top 1% made over $600 billion. Did you make $600 billion during this pandemic? No. Not a chance, right? So what are we going to do? We need to continue to turn out on the streets, continue to support our teachers, mobilize and organize to demand to keep students safe, school workers, and our entire community. If you are in an organization, join one. The capitalists don't outnumber us, they out-organize us. We will continue to organize. We need to continue to build a revolutionary movement that's powerful enough to take down this whole rotten system and build a new one. A socialist system based on people's needs, right? Yes. Gloria LaRiva is on the ballot, here, presidential ballot here in Rhode Island. That is our opportunity to organize, to educate each other. Because when we fight, we win. Thank you. Thank you. Base got blown up, we got thrown up. 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 You know, so I'm just gonna try to transition quickly so we can hear a presidential candidate who's on the ballot, a socialist, Gloria Lariva. And I just want to quickly say that, you know, Fred Hampton, who's the chairman of the Black Panther Party, who's a lot of people don't know, was a socialist organization, right? He said if you're afraid of socialism, you're afraid of yourself. And what that means is that socialism is a system where working class and oppressed people have power, right? That's what we're fighting for. We want real power in the society, whereas right now all the power is owned by those, is controlled by those at the top, those who have wealth. And so Gloria, she's fighting for that socialist system. That's what her campaign is fighting for. She's a longtime union organizer, probably the only presidential candidate who's ever been arrested for fighting police brutality. She's all by and for the people, and she's here to speak a little bit about her campaign, about why you should vote for her in Rhode Island for president in November. So please give it up for Gloria, and welcome Gloria Marina to Providence, Rhode Island.